pathway, understanding net pay resulting from voluntary and statutory deductions, process of statutory pay. Statutory pay will start that calculations also, maybe in one or two days. The national minimum wages for different types of work. What are the national minimum wages? So we'll learn these topics. Let's start with the net and gross pay. Uh, as you know, net pay is the earnings you take home after considering taxes and expenses. Uh, so here in UK, uh, it means like taxes, EY and national insurance contributions mainly, but there could be pensions also. There could be uh, some other deduction like court order or student loans also. So any deductions uh, we need to deduct from the employee's pay after the deducting the tax, uh, taxes and other deduction, which is statutory the net pay is considered. It is important to distinguish between gross pay and net pay because net pay gives you a more accurate figure for your personal future planning. So uh, it is obvious, like if you must have seen uh, more queries around CTC, like uh, I received them because employee <laughs> says that CTC is high, but we receive less amount and taxation is high. So it is a better understanding if employee knows about the net income. So when employees come and ask that what will be the taxation on my uh, package CTC. So net pay, net pay gives more accurate. Okay. So HMRC has calculated for everything like statutory payment and taxation NIC. So in, on the HMRC website, I'll show you that. Okay. So you can find calculations for each and everything that is also helpful. So the person who knows how to use it, like basic information, they need to fit it and they can get the estimate of tax. What could be the tax? Okay, so that is easier. So if you go into HMRC, okay, so now if you go in Google and you type HMRC X calculator, just for example, so tools are HMRC tools and calculators, you see the same website. So you can get it here. Estimate your tag income tax for a previous tax year, estimate your tax income for a current tax year. So this could be used. The only thing is employee will need to fit in some details. They can start and they can fill the details that system will ask, that is a portal will ask and they'll get the end result. What will be the taxation? Okay, so this is available. Even for statutory payments, they have this. So HMRC has given calculators as well. So net pay is the income you receive on your pay slip after deduction. It's sometimes referred to as a take-home pay because this is the amount you receive after tax and other government contributions. In India also, we at times call it uh, enhanced salary or take-home take salary, same way in UK also we call it. Uh, depending on your annual household income or tax code, these contributions can either be mandatory or voluntary, okay? Depending on your annual household income, which means the total income okay? or tax code. These contributions can be mandatory or voluntary. Okay, there will be few deductions which will not be mandatory based on the income. Okay, like NIC may not be deducted if the salary is less. Okay, every employee in the UK needs to calculate a separate net pay. Considers that considers their unique situation. Now, unique situation, what it could be? Tax code. Okay, and there could be some other details that HMRC may consider that we don't know. But for us, it is tax code. So each employee will not have a same situation, possibly. Okay. So this is one of the pieces. So employee details, basic information like we have in India also, employer name and then uh, employer uh, address will be there. Then this is the information on payslip. This is not exactly same. Everything will be same, but it has most of the details that should be there on the UK payslip. Okay, employee name, ID, date of payment should be there. NIC number is mandatory. You see on the right side. Okay, and the right. Let me open this. Okay, sorry. NI number you can see mandatory. Okay. And text code you can see it here. So in some company, it could be on top side text codes. Okay. Then NI category. Like we have text code, there is a NI category also, letter NIA. Okay, category. So these three details are mandatory, very mm. important. Okay. Other details are also important, like tax period, if it is April or December, based on which the employee can calculate the taxes. 
okay which month it is and payment mode it is tax payment okay now some information is not here which should be there you'll find in other payslip format that is ytd figure okay ytd figure will be printed on payslip on the bottom sides okay, anywhere here okay so you you have you can find a ytd figure on the payslip so that you can employee can also see the calculation and do the calculation based on the ytd figures so it will be mentioned okay because here oh it is here ytd <laughs> sorry you see this yeah. year to date okay the only thing is they have put the same amount maybe it is april month that's the reason april is first month okay so taxable gross pay you see thousand only total payments that employee received this month gross and then income tax also what employee has paid that same amount is reflected in the okay then employee nic ytd and employer nic ytd okay employee nic will be printed here also employer nic will only be mentioned on the bottom side because it is not an employee contribution so ytd figure and this period figure is given this will be the basic format of uk based lab normally you yeah. and then employee address it is also here it is also important okay so gross salary refers to the full payment of an employee like you know like the gross pay uh, it will include salary overtime allowances all total payment that employee, employee should receive in that period okay so in uk as i said uh, we don't have ctc structure like in india we have uh, the CTC structure wherein the salary is divided under multiple components. In the mm -hmm. UK, it will be only one component, salary, base salary. Okay, then anything paid on top of it, like any allowances, it will be addition to the salary. Okay, it is not like India, we have to divide the salary into different components, like overtime or car allowance or any kind of allowances will be addition. Okay, yeah, here is the same format of payslip where it is just highlighting the gross pay, how it will look like. Now this is same explanation that has been given. So draw what is gross pay and net pay? I don't think I should explain you that. So gross pay, uh, actually the print is wrong. Instead of a net pay, it should be gross pay here and instead of gross pay, it should be net pay. So what is gross pay and what is net pay? And just an example is given if the uh, salary is one to 1200 for an employee and 350 are the deductions, then the take home will be 850 and 1200 is the gross pay. Okay. Calculate gross salary as a salaried employee. You should do the following. Determine your gross pay per period. Determine the number of pay periods per year. Multiply a gross pay by the pay periods in the year. So this is just to understand how employee can calculate their hourly rate or weekly rate or yearly salary. Okay. So this is something, uh, this example is something uh, on gross and net pay. Uh, so this is, there is some uh, mistake in this calculation. So I'll not take you through this, but I'll show you my calculations. Okay. I'll just give you an example. Okay, how hours, uh, hourly salary is calculated. Okay, so here there is little, little complication, which is not correct. Like uh, in UK, we have 52 weeks. Okay, so the calculation is based on Indian calculation. So I'll just explain you from my side. Okay, one example. So this is mainly to show how gross pay tax and net pay is deducted. Okay, so for example, there is an employee, okay, who earns salary of 1200 per month. Okay. Salary of 1200 per month. And she also works as a freelancer. Sorry. She also works as a freelancer hairdresser okay, where she earns 20 pounds extra. Okay. So for her gross pay, for her, okay, for her gross pay, 1220, right? And it could be more also, 1240 also if she earns more in, in any month. Okay. But this is an extra income okay, on which we are not going to calculate taxes and as an employer okay we'll be calculating taxes for 1200 pounds only 
Okay, for example, if it is it comes to 200 pounds as tax. So taxes is on 1200 pounds. Okay, but her take home salary according to her income because she's earning freelancing also. So her gross pay is 1220, taxation is 200. Okay, so the net pay is. Okay, this is just in a basic example which was given. So I just don't want it to uh, complicate it with something. That's the reason I explained you simply. So employee can do a return filing also like we do in India. Okay, so employee has to disclose this during the return filing 20 pounds, what she has earned. So HMRC, if they find, okay, she has earned 20 pounds or maybe this is one month. If for a year she has earned 500 extra, so what HMRC can do, HMRC can check if she is already paying good uh, amount of tax, then they will not charge more taxation. Otherwise, if they see that employee has earned more as a freelancer, when she declares the return filing, uh, maybe HMRC will give her the taxes that she needs to pay or else they will change the tax code in the upcoming month or in the new year so that they recover the taxation from the employee from the salary these are two steps that hmrc can take okay understood so now in, in uh, uk what happens employee can file re uh, returns in two months in year in a year they can file in january and july okay they have two options now in uk for early employees you can calculate your gross income by doing the following so uh, we'll see this calculation as well determine the number of hours you work every week okay so if employee wants to calculate gross income, but he or she doesn't know what is the monthly income, it could be different. They earn basis hours, okay? Like we have uh, laborers or maybe uh, site workers. They work on daily basis, maybe on hourly basis. If they work for 10 hours, they get hourly wages. Okay, for them, how they can determine their wages. Determine how much you earn in one hour, okay? So per hour salary, if employee earns per hour, for example, 20 pounds per hour. So employee knows that employee is earning 20 pounds per hour. Now, if they want to check what will be their monthly income. So they, first they should know if this is standard for them, like they work standard hours per day or in a week they work standard hours. For example, some employee may say, we work eight hours only in a, in, in a day, okay? So what will be daily salary? So 20 into 8. Okay. Now, if employee says, if the employee knows weekly hours, okay, weekly, uh, if employee says, I work 40 hours. So employee can multiply into weekly. So employee knows weekly salary. This way they okay. can calculate their gross income. Now, if they want to check what is my, this way is easy. This is straightforward, right? Now, if they want to see what will be my monthly income, okay? So normally, if you know weekly hours, this is going to be standard. So what can be done? This weekly salary, okay? We already know the weekly salary. So we can multiply this by 52, the best way. We'll convert it to annual. Divide by 12, sorry, divide by 12. So this is monthly and you get the annual salary also here. This way, that's the reason I showed you this calculation. Here it is mentioned 48, okay, do not ignore this. This is based on India, I think, uh, because we consider four weeks in a month. So this is wrong according to global payroll. Uh, sorry, this is some type of mistake which has happened. So when you read the module, that's the reason I said it will be 52. Okay, oh, sorry. So multiply the number of hours you work by the amount you earn per hour. Okay, the number of hours you work that I have shown you, if it is daily, if it is weekly, or it is annual and monthly. Now, if employee changes the hours, four hours, then this will also change. If they are a part-timer, they do not work 40, they work 20, so they, their weekly salary will also change. So this way, employees can calculate. Okay, normally, what happened, this session is also designed for uh, UK employees if they want to learn the calculation. So that's the reason we keep this module also, how to calculate 
pages. Okay. So always remember this 52 is global payroll cult method. Okay. Global payroll method, wherein in a year we consider 52 weeks. Okay. Over time is there is also one rule wherein uh, employees cannot work more than 45 hours in a week, I guess. So five hours only over time they can work in a week extra. I, I'll check that, let you know. Uh, I don't think it is in this module, but I'll check and let you know how much maximum over time they can do. Here it is multiply weekly pay. No, 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 it is not here. Sorry. Yeah. It depends on the weekly hours. Like if employee works 30 hours as a full, uh, as an employee, so they can work only those extra hours as over time, not more than that. Employer is not allowed to get the work done more than those hours. Uh, HMRC is, I think it is 48 hours in a week. Uh, now we'll go ahead with the next topic, which is understanding net pay resulting from voluntary and statutory deduction. So we'll uh, learn about some voluntary deductions and statutory. So mandatory deductions, as I told you, government income taxes, which is PAY, okay, taxes is one of the mandatory deduction and national insurance is also a mandatory deductions, okay, which is for everyone. If employee salary reaches that level, then there will be this deduction for sure. Now, student loan repayment is also a mandatory deduction okay? because most of the uh, students take loan. That is government student loan deductions, right? Not private one. Okay. So it is a mandatory deduction as well. So it is same like NI and taxes. If employee salary reaches at some level, only condition is that employee has taken loan, has taken loan earlier. Then only this will be deducted, but it is mandatory. You cannot stop. You cannot postpone. If employee salary reaches at that level, they have to pay. Okay. So then mandatory payroll deduction uh, continues. It's essential to ensure tax code is correct. You see this? What I explained you yesterday to avoid paying either excess or too little tax. So tax is very important to ensure that correct tax code is applied for the employees. Employee tax code informs the employer about any tax exemption. So as I explained you, tax code is the tax exemption amount that we come to know, like based on the tax code, what, what will be the tax exemption amount, or if there is any tax exemption or how much taxes, how the taxes will be calculated. Tax code is used by the employer or the pension provider to work out how much income tax take from the pay or pension. Okay, so uh, it is, for pension as well. As I explained you earlier, for pension, it may change. The tax code, HMRC may change. They may reduce it or they may change it. HMRC tells the employees which code to use. As I said, it will be from HMRC will receive the tax codes. Use the check your income tax online service within your personal tax account. This is the personal portal that employee can uh, these are the steps. This is not a portal, but in the personal portal, how employees can check the X tax details. This is shown here. So use the check your income tax online service. This is for employees with your personal tax account. They will have their own login. So sign in with government gateway or create an account if you do not have one. If employee has not yet created the account, they can create using their personal tax account number. View your tax code for previous tax year as well as for the next tax year. See if your tax code has changed how much tax you are likely to pay. Okay, so they can view the tax code as well. Okay, and if there is a change in tax code that also they can see in the portal now. Okay, okay. online portal. And next year means as well as for next year, they can see means if you like uh, yesterday, I showed you that the, the changes were published on 27th February for April. So it was in advance. So they can also see in advance what will be their tax code for the next year. Like in next March year. also they can see. Now steps to find tax code. Okay, tax code is made of uh, up of several numbers and letters. I think I, I uh, this this is something I've already explained you yesterday, but let me go through the uh, notes. Okay, the numbers in your tax code tell you how much tax-free income you get in that year. Okay. As, as I explained to you yesterday. Letters in your tax code refer to your situation and how it affects your personal loans. Like I said, L, M, N, uh, yes. P, okay. yeah. what is PR and also everything. 
I've explained to you yesterday. So you, you can see the Xcode on your payslip. This is mandatory in your payslip, okay? Then meaning of all the letters is shown here, which I explained to you already yesterday. L, M, N, T, 0, T, B, R. This is the same explanation that I've shown you yesterday. It is copy pasted from that same, same thing, okay? So this is for Scotland from S, L, S, D2, and then C is for Wales from here till C, D1. So this is the same information that we've seen yesterday. Okay, so this was the mandatory deduction. Now let's see what kind of voluntary payroll deductions will be there, which means there could be a situation when employee has opted for something, okay? Like charitable contribution, it is not a mandatory one. Okay, it is employee's choice. They can do it. So do you remember what we call contributions, charitable contributions in UK? Do you remember the term? Okay, give as you want. So GAY means the charitable contributions, donations. Life insurance premiums, this is also not mandatory. If employers providing some choice, some kind of pension, uh, sorry, life insurance premium, that could be opted by employee. Health insurance premiums for vision, dental, and other medical coverage, these are for better service, okay? There's certain retirement earnings, like the pensions. Pension is also, again, voluntary, as I said. There will be auto deduction starting for the private pension or that is company pension, but employee can opt out, okay? It's employee's choice. Then okay. employer specific deduction, if there is anything else from employer, that will be, again, voluntary payroll deductions. Like I explained you one example, SAYE. So remember, save as you want. So that could be employer specific deduction. Like uh, like it was like a, a three-year plan or five-year plan or seven-year plan, wherein mm -hmm. a standard amount was, de was deducted from employee salary and it mm -hmm. was invested in the market. Like we have mutual funds or uh, other kinds of uh, investment portfolios, right, mm -hmm. on a higher side. So this is also provided by some of the organizations. Okay, okay. there could be more. So this mm -hmm. is deducted from employee. Then the process of statutory pay. This is the statutory payment, what we were talking about, like the maternity payment, uh, sickness payment, okay? And then paternity, shared parental, bereavement pay. So let's talk more about the statutory payments. What are these and uh, uh, what are the background around these payments? An individual qualifies for statutory payment as his or her employer is liable to pay national insurance contributions on their wages or salary. Now you relate it because an um, um, individual qualifies for statutory payment as his or her employer is liable to pay national insurance contribution. So why they are getting the benefit? Because national insurance is contributed and that is government has to give it because government has promised that uh, we'll give those benefits to the individual, whoever qualifies, okay? Not everyone. They have to fulfill the criteria. Like one of the criteria will be earnings. Employee salary should be at this level. That is there is a LEL I showed you, lower earning limit and primary threshold. Only above primary threshold, employee will contribute to NIC. Okay, so if employee salary is above LEL, lower hmm. earning limit, so employer will contribute at least if employee oh. is not contributing. Okay, so following one, is the, one of the criteria is employee salary. And there are some other criteria as well that, that we'll see. Okay, the other criteria will be different for different kind of leave. Like, uh, becoming a parent, including through adoption. So if they have to prove that they have become parent actually, if mm -hmm. they are taking adoption benefits, so it should be proven that they have really taken the adop adoption of the child. Mm -hmm. Okay, some, some person, like as I said, they are girlfriend, boyfriend, right? And they are not into civil partnership, serious relationship or something. That male partner or female partner, Okay, they both need to prove it. If they have taken adoption, are this really a, a parent for that child whom they have adopted? Mm -hmm. So legal documentation will be done. They cannot run away from that. So that doesn't mean one person has adopted a child that is a female person and that male partner is taking unnecessary benefit of that adoption. So that is mm -hmm. not right. Okay, so they have to provide the proof or maybe they have to submit the legal documentation. Same like becoming a parent, uh, the, the male partner in, in UK, it is not mandatory to get married, as I said, okay, they have civil partnership also. So 
that person should be a married person like married to that female or else should be a civil partner okay to take that benefit like the paternity leave or shared parental okay mainly males get the shared parental and maternity benefit female get that maternity and shared parental also okay so male also has that benefit if why i'll tell you why maternity and adoption is same 39 weeks of payment employees get and they get 52 weeks of leave so remaining period is unpaid okay 39 weeks of payment they get and total 52 weeks of leave they get okay if any female employee says i just need 10 weeks of leave okay and remaining i'll pass on to my partner so they can pass on that male partner can take the remaining uh, oh. 42 weeks of leave and 29 weeks of payment that male mm. partner can take they are with different employers mm. and that is the reason and then for shared parental they have to submit documentation prove that the relationship and all okay mm. so and they have to also show that the the female partner has returned to work actually then only they can take the shared parental otherwise both of them uh, it will be a uh, uh, what we say it will be a uh, non compliance activity from hmrc point of view because if female partner returns to work then only male partner can take the shared parental leave okay if female partner takes full maternity leave then male partner cannot take shared parental then if you remember maternity allowance if employee has worked earlier in some organization what is what is one of the criteria where employee cannot get the payment one is that employee salary is less that like 123 pounds uh, or below that the second one is time period which means she has served this many days or months in the organization okay if she has not fulfilled those days in current organization so she will she will not be receiving the payment from the current organization but it could be possible that she has worked for 10 years in or 5 years in another organization she was contributing to nic that means she has that eligibility but due to this new employer okay maybe she has joined just 2 months back that is the reason she is not getting the payment from this employer because that is her hmrc rule she has not completed that period she will be on unpaid leave in that scenario employee can reach out to hmrc and take direct payment from hmrc Okay. Okay. because she she is contributing to nic she her salary is above 123 pounds okay so she is eligible these are the two scenarios okay uh-huh. now male partner also can happen this way also one mm-hmm. scenario is shared parental they have they can take the leave mm-hmm. they cannot be denied if they take shared parental leave for example her his uh, wife returns after 10 weeks so from 11 week male partner can take leave right the leave cannot be denied but payment can be uh, payment eligibility is different so if the male partner's salary is below 123 pounds he will not get the payment only unpaid leave for the uh, 42 weeks okay but if this partner has joined this organization two months back okay and earlier this person was working somewhere already in, in contributing to nic and employee salary is also above 123 pounds then that person can check the eligibility which uh, with yeah. hmrc if they can get the payment okay but normally this happens for maternity allowance same goes with adoption also they can contact hmrc in that case okay now this is regarding maternity paternity uh, shared parental okay now regarding sickness when an employee can take statutory sickness when the employee seriously ill okay out of work due to illness that time employee can take statutory sickness payment okay this is second and then uh, the third one is parental bereavement pay this is regarding the death of the child if employee's child has died both partners can take leave okay two weeks of leave and which will be uh, paid by hmrc like they pay the maternity statutory payments say they will pay for statutory bereavement pay also okay if the they fulfill the criteria okay for sickness the criteria is little different for parental bereavement uh, maternity adoption paternity shared parental it is almost same okay the criteria for statutory maternity statutory paternity statutory adoption or shared parental leave and pay okay 
So we'll see what are the criteria. One is minimum earnings that I told you, right? 123 pounds minimum earning. Okay, then continuous employment that I told you, there is one period. We'll see that when we do calculations, otherwise you'll forget about it now. So I'll show you that what is the period. One is minimum earning and continuous employment, both we talked. Okay. The other thing is in paternity and adoption cases, relationship with child. This is also something we talk in the biological mother or other adoptive parent. They have to prove the relationship. Okay. Then there is one more rule, certain notification rules. Okay. So if, for example, someone is taking maternity leave because she knows that she's pregnant and she will take plan the leave. So she has to inform employer in advance. She cannot say that I'm going on maternity leave next week. Okay, that will be too late notification for it. So at that time, what a, a company can do, they can deny the leave. They can oh. ask the employee to postpone it, but they cannot postpone till the time employee, uh, like if employee is delivering baby, so they have to mm -hmm. give leave. Beyond that, they cannot postpone, but, and that is something manager will come to know about the pet, uh, maternity anyways. Mm -hmm. Mean, uh, meanwhile, but if employee wants to take maternity leave, they have to inform at least one month in advance. There is a period that also we'll see. So there are some oh. notification rules, even for sickness, they have to inform properly with the, uh, uh, like if there is any long-term sickness or there is some illness, they already know. At least mm -hmm. they have to inform immediately mm -hmm. about the sickness. There are some rules, uh, same for adoption, shared parental. Adoption also, they can inform in advance. They have to inform. Uh, shared parental also, they have to inform in advance because these are the leaves wherein employees know. Sickness still understood. Seven days criteria is there. Uh, but other leaves, we know that uh, even bereavement pay, that is also sudden. But shared parental, adoption, maternity, and paternity, this should be informed well in advance. Otherwise, employer can say that we don't have anyone to support work during your mm -hmm. absence and you are the critical person of this job and they can ask to postpone. Then statutory sick pay. There is a form which is shared. So statutory sick pay is paid to the employees who are off work to illness. And mm -hmm. this is the form they have to fill when they take the sickness. HMRC form, they can download and fill it. Okay. And they can uh, attach the, uh, like if it is more than seven days, normally uh, they attach a doctor's certificate for a long, long term. Like in India, we need three days. We need doctor certificate, right? Minimum three days. In UK, normally they, uh, they need it if they take seven days. This is normal step, which is shown again, same like payroll cycle, collect the payroll inputs, which is regarding the statutory payments. If we come to know, uh, collect the payroll input, define the pay components properly, if employees eligible for the payment or not, and if it is maternity, so pay it in maternity properly, okay, and if it is adoption, pay it in adoption, so this is something payroll will need to define whenever they come to know about such cases, statutory cases. Then set pay policy, okay, then set pay policy, which means, as I said, uh, uh, if employees eligible for payment or not, and if yes, then for how much period and what is the payment criteria. So now what happens, statutory payment will be standard. Okay, but in some companies what happened, they, they pay extra, that is company maternity pay or company adoption pay. And that could be different uh, for different companies. That is not standard. This depends on the companies. Okay, if ABC company pays for 10 weeks full pay, like they say, we'll pay 10 weeks full pay. In addition, in addition to statutory payment, XYZ company says will pay 16 weeks full pay. Okay, now for example, ABC has taken over XYZ company. Okay, so in a UK, what happens? They have strict law at times. They follow the rule, like the policy of their existing companies. Also at times, they will not uh, remove that policy. So what happens in ABC company? There will be two policies now. One will be 10 weeks and one will be 16 weeks, right? Understood? So for example, uh, you're, uh, I am working with ABC company, okay? And mm -hmm. you're working with XYZ company. So my company says that, uh, just take maternity example, <laughs> although we are male, okay? Mm -hmm. So my company says maternity will be paid uh, 
like statutory is there whatever hmrc says that will be standard for your and my company but my company says in addition will pay 10 weeks full pay to the employee if they are taking maternity leave as i said statutory payment is for 39 weeks so hmm. till 10 weeks employee gets 10 week full pay and then remaining that will be standard rate that hmrc says okay but your company says will pay 16 weeks full pay if employee is on maternity okay so in case uh, what happens some company takes over uh, another company okay so they retain that policies so like i was working for one of the company wherein they had five different policies so we have to check which uh, contract employee has one contract says that employee will receive 6 weeks full pay another contract uh, says that employee will receive 12 weeks full pay and some a one contract was paying 20 weeks So okay. this way, we have to check the policy which should be applied to the employee. Okay, that is okay. the reason it is mentioned set pay policy. Okay, mm-hmm. so you have to check employee contract if there is any different policy for the employee. Statutory payment will be standard, but on top of it, what we pay company pay, that will change. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then calculate the payroll like we do normal. Then distribute the pay, uh, deposit the taxes and. Uh, NIC, sorry, it is Indian term used here. TDS, PF, ESI. You can just relate to NI, and PAY. Okay. So if you go into national minimum wage, okay, it will be directed. So from first April two thousand twenty-three, the national minimum wage for age twenty-three and above is ten point forty-two pounds per hour. Then age twenty-one to twenty-two, ten pound point. Oh, uh, sorry, ten pounds. Uh, eighteen pence. Per hour, okay. So if age is eighteen to twenty, pounds seven point four nine per hour. This is the minimum salary they should be receiving as a salary, okay. As a salary, company should pay this amount. They can pay more also. That is fine, not less than this. Otherwise, it is a compliance issue because they will be charged by the HMRC. There could be a case also penalties. Anything could be done, okay. If employees aged under 18, but above compulsory school leaving age, which is 16. Okay, so employee will receive pounds 5.28 per hour. Same way for apprentices. Okay, they have this salary per hour rate is 5.28. So these are the early rates. No company can say that we'll pay you extra overtime and we'll cover your national minimum wage. That is wrong. Okay, mm-hmm. employee should get the salary, base salary at this rate. Overtime is on top of it. Allowances are on top of it. Benefits are on top of it. Okay, that that is separate. So no one can compensate this amount with the salary. So I hope this one slide is a bigger slide because I have to explain in detail. Uh, yeah. but there are still few things we'll learn more in upcoming slides. Okay, so here comes the national minimum wages for different types of worker. So same things will be explained, but uh, let me read out the module. The national minimum wage is worked out at an hourly rate that I told you. It also applies to all eligible workers, even if they are not paid by the hour. Which means, if employ employees are monthly salary paid employees or annual salary paid employees, they are also eligible for minimum hour rate because this is not only for hourly rate employees. Okay, so if this is an annual salary, we have to convert the employee salary to hourly rate and check if employee receives minimum salary or not. Okay, and that is something we do during the payroll run also. Like when we generate the output report, we check if employee is receiving national minimum wage or not. That is not net pay. Gross pay should be like the gross salary should be national minimum wage. Okay. However, someone gets paid, they still need to work out their equivalent hourly rate to see if they are getting the minimum wage. Okay. People classed as workers must be at At least school living age to get the national minimum wage, they must be twenty three because they are allowed to work at the age of twelve also. But there, the statutory rule doesn't apply there because they will be not paid through pay system. That is the HMRC system. There, there will be no taxation and all. So national minimum wage doesn't apply for them. It is only after sixteen. Okay, they must be twenty three or over. To get the national living wage, okay. National living wage is also same, uh, but it is called normally for the um, like the new term has been introduced, the national living wage with national minimum wage. 
okay so workers are also entitled to the correct minimum wage if they are you see normally we use national minimum wage only not living wage okay but somewhere some people say living wage okay but it is one and the same so workers if they are part time they are also eligible if they are casual laborers they are also el eligible agency workers apprentices they are also eligible for minimum wage okay no one can say that you are a laborer so you cannot get national minimum wage this is wrong if their age falls under that category they have to it is up to employer how they utilize the laborers right but they have to pay minimum salary okay trainees have some minimum salary based on the age they should get home workers agriculture workers foreign workers offshore workers seafarers disabled workers workers on probation literally like generally like uh, it it is for all the employees it says okay so uh, not all the category of workers are explained here but it is applied for everyone who works in uk now receiving higher rates than minimum wage as i said higher rates can be paid that is fine uh on top of it like what could be it? if it is not salary then it could be overtime or any allowance which employee receives extra but they cannot receive less okay there are certain types of work in which you may get higher rate than minimum wage such as overtime weekend or night shifts working on a bank holiday okay working longer than agreed hours trips tips or gratuity gratuities or service charges you receive so these are some extra payment which is on above the national minimum wage you mm -hmm. cannot mix it up so example we can see here if a care worker attends two appointments in the morning without having any breaks okay in this mm -hmm. case the worker is paid the minimum wage for the time he spends at the appointments even if there is some gap 10 minutes or half an hour that is considered in the work hours okay because mm -hmm. the employee has not taken the break a care worker attends two appointments one in the morning and one in the afternoon respectively mm -hmm. after the morning appointment he goes home to take a break and then goes to his afternoon appointment so in this case it is different he is taking taking personal break okay mm -hmm. so that the time between that break mm -hmm. will not be considered for the payment that should mm -hmm. be not be early uh, that should not be the hours we have to pay okay mm -hmm. the traveling time from first appointment to his home and from his home to the second appointment does not count toward the minimum wage okay because uh, no 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 none of the employer will say that you go home and take the lunch mm -hmm. and break okay break time is fine like uh, some organization consider 30 hours sorry 30 minutes break or 45 minutes break so they can consider that but the travel time in between from home and home to office is not correct that that could not be paid if the care worker took a break without going home on the way to his next appointment he would be paid for the travel time but not for the break okay so normally what happens our working hours are 8 but out of that 30 minutes might be our break time okay so we normally say we we are working hours is 7.5 okay but we are paid the full salary only because it is considered when we have the contract okay so break is not paid actually but normally we say that okay one day salary so and so and my working hours are 8 but in between there are breaks also so that is the reason some organization can can say that will not pay for the breaks okay they can say that your salary is only 7.5 hours like in some countries they strictly say the time card you have to fill the mm. only the working hours they do Okay, not the break. So this this example states that. Okay, yeah. this is just to understand how we can pay our employees. Okay, this ends the module.